you're going to probably see our uh, other captain come sliding in here in just a little bit. I just <laughs> spoke with him a little while ago. He is around and available. Uh, the two of them got more interesting stories than I do this <laughs> speak week. Speak of the uh, captain. Hey, Eric. Yeah. Hey, speaking of the devil, so to You're speak. Live and on air, Eric. Uh, hey, hey, where's your cap? You're the, the, the bright light is killing me, the glare. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, so here we are again, and uh, this is the place you want to be if you're afraid to fly, if you know somebody who's afraid to fly, or you just like to talk about airplanes, or this week if you like to talk about the coronavirus, because uh, there's basically nothing else in the news that doesn't have that somewhere in the in the uh, content. Um, we are here again, and uh, we're, we got a few things to talk with you about tonight. We first want to remind you to join our Birds of a Feather group. Uh, and uh, if you're not a member over there, we encourage you to do that. Please go over there, introduce yourself, and a uh, little bit about your, your history, a little bit about your backstory there. And if you need support or you want to give support, uh, both are entirely welcome over there. And uh, then for tonight, the, the, the show, we got a poll question for you. Uh, this is uh, most appropriate, I thought. Which do you fear most? Flying or the COVID-19 virus? So we're just curious to see uh, any of you who have an opinion over that as you go down through the uh, through the uh, uh, show tonight. And uh, then uh, we're, we're, we're going to uh, talk a little bit about the uh, uh, update on the 201 class, which is now an online class. Really excited about that. We're gonna spend just a few minutes Give me some highlights of, of what you're going to uh, experience on that. And uh, let me know. Okay. All right. All right. That sounded like a big sigh. Was that you, Eric? <laughs> it just came in off the, off the uh, mountain bike, just came in, jumped to the pool, ran up here, and I have an adult beverage off to the side out of view of the camera. Okay. So I'm getting the video when I have to have a uh, sip for medicinal purposes. Okay. So, so we're going to jump from the from the 201, and then we're gonna, we got a couple of uh, uh, things in the aviation news, and uh, then we're going to wind it up and uh, bid you adieu for the next week because we can't wait to see what's in store. It's been such a such a crazy week already. So, all right. So let's uh, pop the poll question up there if you would, yep. Peter. Um, to do. It's see. right. Okay, got it up. Okay. okay, if I could just get my screen to cooperate. Come on, come on. So it's an. Okay. It's a, yeah. Do you see it up there? Yeah, it's up okay, there. Okay, good. Okay. So just if if you would enter in the comments there, give us an idea of whether uh, which one is the worst for you. And uh, I have a theory about this. You know, some of you that I've coached out there, uh, I've compared. I said if you're you know you're sitting there in turbulence, freaking out, and worrying about worrying about uh, losing control or crashing, and the pilot's losing control, something like that. I said if I could pull a gun on you and and uh, and uh, make you believe that I was going to use that thing. I bet your fear of flying would would disappear in that moment, and that's the whole point uh, of the poll question. Is we seem to have a priority for for what we worry about most. You know, I'm worried about the house payment, but then somebody runs a red light and almost kills me in an intersection, and in that moment, I'm not worried about the house payment anymore. I'm worried about the the fact that somebody's trying to nail me in my car. Uh, and, and I'm, not, I'm not trying to minimize anything about the coronavirus or anything like that. We take it very seriously. Uh, may share a couple of, couple of the strategies that I've heard about keeping yourself as far away from it, as healthy as you can. But, but we do want to take it into perspective. And it's a great, it's a great dovetail for fear of flying. All the things you talked about. And uh, Eric and I were talking today. We have some time. He wants to share a little bit about, about his week and uh, not to evoke any sympathy, but just what it's like to be in the airline industry right now. And uh, Dieter was on the other end, the receiving end, going over to Thailand and back and uh, came back a little bit earlier. So we're going to let him talk about uh, his experiences uh, in the week. And uh, next, we want to move on to the, uh, the uh, uh, 201 class. I want to remind you what it's going to entail. Uh, it, we're, we're going to have, uh, uh, first of all, the 201 now is going to be delivered in four 90-minute modules. And I'm going to talk about the content of those in just a minute. Uh, the uh, price, we're dropping the price. 
uh, for the two one from three ninety seven to one ninety seven, and that's going to be on the early bird special. You're all going to be have a chance, more than a chance, to get into that. We're we should have that up and running. Uh, we thought by last week, but with all the chaos and everything, we just uh, didn't get it done. So we'll have that. We should have the registration page up there. I've had a couple people who live well outside the Phoenix area who did the 15 minute coaching calls and they're excited, they're gonna take it. And you know, I can tell by the, by the, the activity, the lack of activity, in, you know, in, our, in, our, in, the, in the blog, in the, in the uh, uh, Birds of a Feather group and our, and our Facebook page, that your interests are occupied elsewhere as they understandably would. But I'm gonna encourage you to stay focused and, and I can't think of a better way than to talk about your fear of flying and get your mind on something else, something else which is gonna have a long-term effect on it. You know, one of the, the most fulfilling things about doing this work that I've been doing for the last 32 years is when I talk to people who remind me that, or, or let me know that when they, when they get through this and they start having a, a better experience flying on airplanes, the other thing they noticed was how other parts of their lives, other fears, other anxieties, and, 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 and generally a, a greater show of courage, like asking for, for promotions and, and raises in their jobs and, and things like that. Those are just some of, the, some of the, the things that I've noticed over the years. So anyway, so, so I hope you can join us here. And just if you can look on the slide there, you'll see four 90 minute modules. I mentioned the price there. Uh, the first module is gonna be on Saturday, April 11th at 10 a.m. Uh, and that would be Pacific Daylight Time, uh, okay? Y if you live in the Pacific Time Zone, you won't have to worry about it. It's, it's 10 o'clock your time, all right? I have to, all, I have to coach my uh, Arizona uh, friends here because we don't, we don't change time, so we're the same as the West Coast at that point in time. But anyway, it's, it's going to be 10 o'clock every mo or the, on the morning of the April 11th. Then the following week on April 18th, we're going to meet again for 90 minutes at 10 o'clock. Then the next day, right after that, April 19th, we're going to meet at 10 o'clock. And then on uh, April 21st, which is the Wednesday following the 19th, we're going to meet at 6 p.m. in the evening Pacific time. So we hope you can join us. We're going to be telling you more about that. We're going to get the, the uh, information and registration page up this week. So you'll be able to go over there and have a much better idea. It's we're we're nearly doubling the content from what we do in the in the live classes because we simply have more time. And not only that, you're going to have the opportunity to to listen to it, go back if you should miss part or all of one of the modules. You'll be able to pick it up uh, after after uh, a short time after that, and we're going to give you access to it for a period of time after that. So so it's going to be a, kind of a living uh, thing there. The 301 class. Uh, Southwest did it again. They, they dropped their fares again. So what do you think? Think they're having trouble filling their seats? You bet. Uh, here's the deal on the 301 class. If we can, I'm going to fly. I'm going to keep my reservation up until the last minute on Southwest. And uh, so we're going to fly on the 25th of April. What we'll do now, instead of going in early in the morning, we'll meet there at noon and we'll have more of these details coming out later. But we're going to go in at noon and we're going to have a two hour opportunity to brief and get ready. We're going to go the gate, board the flight and go to Las Vegas and back, just like we always did. All right. So we're going to do that if at all possible. If I have one person show up, I'm going to fly with them. So you're going to get a personal one to one service if, if you're the only one that shows up. Uh, if for some reason, they, not for some reason, but if they haven't listed, lifted the restrictions here on the meeting, even if it's like, you know, you can meet with 10 or fewer, uh, we're not going to, we're not going to violate that. Uh, we're, we're, we're looking for a, a lightening of the, of the restrictions there. We don't want to get anybody sick. And I got, I'm here with my 94 year old mom. I definitely don't want to bring something back to her. So, but uh, keep in mind that, it, that if you have any desire to do that, and Southwest right now, they're really flexible. You get that low fare, and, and it'll be good for a year if we, if we don't fly on that day. Okay, let me see anything else on that. Yeah, regular price will be $297, uh, and the, uh, the early bird will be $197. So uh, think about uh, joining with us. Just real quick, let's talk about what the 201 is going to entail. Uh, we're going to, we're going to, the, the first module is the psychology of the, of fear of flying that if you, if you want to read up on some of the things we're going to talk about, although we're going to go in much more detail, get the book. 
uh, it's a cheap plug to get how, how to overcome fear of flying, and, and uh, because we're going to take we're going to use that as the as the, the the textbook for the class, and so it'll be a great resource. You can make notes and all that. Plus, you'll have the the uh, videos to work with it there. And and uh, we're gonna first thing we're going to talk about in, in module one is how the uh, we're born to worry. And uh, we've, we've talked about that uh, before. That's just the way we're, we're organized as, as human beings, our minds are. And then we're gonna talk about something called system one and system two. Why your brain is, is why it worries basically how, and what the process is. There are some things that you, that you can't avoid. So you need to know how that works, the psychology of your mind and the psychology of fear of flying. We're gonna talk about the stories we tell ourselves. What is it, it you know, we, we have beliefs and then we make up stories to support those beliefs. A lot of people think that, you know, we, we go through a logical process and we come with factual conclusions and, and beliefs. It's just the opposite of that, folks. We do it in reverse. We, make, we have beliefs and then we look for, for uh, evidence in the, our environment to support that. And, and, that, and basically our brain's designed to tell stories. And then in module two, we're going to talk about the basics of flight. This is always the fun part because everybody, you know, likes to talk about airplanes or most people do. Even the people who say, you know, I'm not worried about the airplane crash and I just don't like it when they close the door. Well, even though we're going to talk a lot about that in, in, in uh, the first module, the second one is going to be about the, the, the uh, basics of flight, how it flies, why it's so safe, why it's getting safer. And, uh, and when we crash, we'll talk about some crashes and what we learn from them and the fact that, that if, we, if we monitored ourselves and, and, and regulated ourselves like in, in automobile safety, like we do in, in uh, airplanes, we wouldn't kill 35 to 40,000 people every year on the highways. Um, and and um, so that's what we're gonna talk about in the basics flight. And in three, we're getting into the real meat of this. We're gonna dedicate a whole module to coping tools and strategies. What can you do? And spread out throughout the course, I've got some activities that'll teach you some fun things about yourself uh, that you'll, you'll probably have a, a, a bit of a chuckle over that. And then in module four, we're gonna tie it all together. We're gonna to get, the, the, we're gonna go over any questions that we've accumulated throughout the course that we haven't uh, addressed. And we're going to give that, that it's going to be your time in total to come on and, and uh, let us know what you need to know to, in order to do that. And by that time, we should be into building, helping you build the flight plan for the future as far as getting over your fear. So lo and behold, if you do it right, by the time anybody wants to go back to flying and the airlines go back into, in the, in the uh, hauling people from point A to point B, you'll be ahead of the curve this time. You'll be ready for it. Okay. Uh, Moving on, I just want to take a quick shot just to show you I'm not making it up that the uh, the uh, Southwest is uh, in fact um, dropped their fares again. Uh, this what this is the same flight they haven't they haven't dropped our flight. They they they've uh, it's still forty five dollars, but they are advertising overall a thirty nine dollar fare. So if you got friends or you want to get bold and, and book a flight somewhere yourself on Southwest, you can do it for 39 bucks. It's, uh, it, it's uh, going to be probably going to be like that for a while. That's the good news. The bad news is, is, is uh, nobody's really flying right now. And, and that is in fact why they're, they're doing that. Okay. And then the good news. what's that? We forgot the other good news. If Tell me the do, other good news. If we do fly with even one person or three and have our whole group in the airplane to ourselves, it'll be a one-time experience. It'll be like a chartered. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. That's like the elite custom coaching program. Um. Incredible. <laughs> no yeah, you're gonna get, you're gonna get, you're gonna get more, more money for your more buck, more bounce for your buck there, or boom for your buck. All right, all right. And then, and then now the next slide here. I want to touch on this, and we're gonna, I'm gonna draw Eric and, and Dieter into this a little bit more. Uh, this is just something I. I I picked up out of my uh, fear flying alert uh, off of Google here and went over there. It's a really mundane story, really uh, about a, a, a woman who uh, rode in here and, and uh, she was, she was talking to her mom about flying and about the coronavirus. and the title of it is, is uh, Corona crazy. And, uh, and, and in the middle of telling her mom the story to, to try to calm her mom's fears, she says, Oh, 
she goes into a story about how a, a, a lady that either she knew or was the same age or something was murdered on her way home one night. And so, she, you know, and the, and the bottom line, which I highlighted there, you can see is she said, you know, it doesn't any good, doesn't do any good for us to tell one another that the chances of something happen, you know, is low, and, you know, statistically or anything like that, because fear is fear. And the reason that is, is in, and this is, speaks to the heart of the matter, uh, it's about logic. And, and Eric's got his, a, a, a story, uh, I think, that he's going to share with us about what's going on, just being a crew member right now with the airlines. But he's got to make some decisions that he had no idea was going to, going to make. And it, it, it's the same problem. It's, you know, he's, he's, he, and I don't want to steal his thunder, but he's, he's trying to make this decision. And, and underneath it, he knows the logic, he knows the pluses and the minuses and all that, but it's the emotion that grabs him. And, and, and when in the, in the class, in the, in the online class that you're gonna take here, if you choose to do that with us, you're gonna, you're gonna learn about the system one and system two brains that we use and how, how we have a bias for using the one that just uses our intuition and takes that for the, for the gospel truth. And, and it really can lead you down the wrong path there. So, so that was a story in that. The next one is, is I just thought kind of pushing back the, the, the consumers are pushing back a little bit. There's a, of course, you know, there's a, in the news is this huge 1.6 plus trillion dollar bailout that they're talking about in Congress. And, uh, and a big part of that is, is supposed to be dedicated to the airlines. And there are some people pushing back the consumers, you know, they're saying, you know, yeah, you know, you wanted to, and the term, I love this. They said, you want to privatize the profits as airlines. And, and, and when you're making money and all this, you know, and you want to socialize the losses. <laughs> I thought that was interesting with all the controversy between socialized socialization stuff that's been in. in Seems the, like a in great the, idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, and, uh, and, you know, and, and people are pushing. Wait, back actually, that doesn't seem like a great idea. That seems like more of the same to me. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Because, you know, um, and I, I'll jump in after Eric as well. But, you know, having been firsthand on many, many, many thousands of miles going from Canada to Bangkok and then back again, um, that I've seen firsthand internationally, you know, how this whole pandemic has um, affected people um, in airports and planes and crew and staff and of course passengers. So, um, yeah. so I'm, I'm thinking, you know, wow, there's a novel idea if we could actually, you know, do something different about it. Yeah, you know what? What since since you jumped in there, Dieter, why don't, why don't you just share that? Because uh, some people, I think some of our listeners or followers are aware that you went to Thailand last week, or just what? What about nine days ago, or something yeah, like that? Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> and because we did the show from over there. So what was it like? Uh, you know, we we heard a little bit about you going over there. What was it? What you you came back a little bit early, and and what what transpired in the time that you were over there? Well, um. Um, we left uh, on March 12th and, um, and already leading up to it, um, you know, there were no travel bans or anything of that nature. It was just, you know, everybody was watching China and, um, you know, we heard, oh, it's going to be gone by April miraculously or something, you know, things like that. China, in fact, did get better. Yeah. Oh, my God. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and even already on March 12th, China had already kind of like... Um, uh, you know, positive movement um, in containing it and getting uh, ahead of it. So we felt fairly confident that, you know, over there that we're not really running into, into any issues. And then obviously we got there and over the course of, you know, 10 days, everything unfolded the way it did and um, entire countries closed uh, their borders, you know, to travelers going in and out in some cases. And um, the flights were over there, were already maybe half full at best. Um, and, you know, it's, it's funny when you sit in a, in a uh, Boeing 787 uh, Dreamliner and you can just sprawl you know, um, so that was a positive experience. It wasn't like that coming back, let me tell you, because with all the airlines and with all the countries, kind of like it limits the abilities for people like us who want to get back home, right? Who want to make sure that, that we are doing what we can to 
do so our was it because there were, it were there were far fewer seats available coming back because yeah they, far fewer airlines yeah. like lufthansa canceled 90 percent of all of yeah, its international that. travel and they're a big player and um especially through star alliance they're a big player right and so that was that shook all the the travel sites and we had to um, rebook, obviously, our flights, and it took about five hours on the phone before I could speak to somebody, uh, just because they're so overwhelmed, right? They're yeah. just um, yeah. up to the limit with, with everybody being, and we've we'll, got to talk about that anxiety versus fear thing at some point. Um, yeah. So yeah, customer service in everything. Yeah. I mean, I, I just had a couple of routine calls that, you know, for, for some of the electronics, I've got stuff like that, and, and you get a message that says, sorry, you know, send us an email because uh, we, <laughs> yeah. we're down to a, a, a sh shadow staff. So anyway, yeah. And uh, uh, so what was it like just getting, you know, so was it, you know, was it a thrill just to get back in Canadian soil? And uh, or Absolutely. I mean, I mean, I know, obviously we haven't been um, tested for coronavirus, but we had definitely our temperature taken at uh, every, every airport and um, anywhere, you know, um, there were social distancing announcements right. and, and the strips. Person, was the technician with the with the thermostat? Were they were they all protected themselves? Uh, and, uh, hazmat suit, actually. Hazmat suit, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that was not not just a cute little mask or anything like. Yeah. Full, yeah. yeah, yeah. But but did they change every time? You know, they check somebody else. I'm guessing that they probably just did. Ching, 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 yeah. Ching. Um, yeah. So the way this works, they don't actually have to touch you. Right, in, in, in these machines, yeah. and um, and they basically give you a reading between green, orange, and red. Okay. And uh, um, if you're green, you're good to go. If you are orange, then they're gonna take you over to another station. Um, it's like a quarantine kind of procedure, and um, and they, obviously, if you're red, then you're being you know immediately isolated um, for you know kind of checks that where already people are worrying that you might be a con you know carrying the computer. yeah and ju i'm just out of curiosity did you see anybody already or do you have any sense of what happened to somebody that was was uh tested red? Yeah, so, what happened to him well obviously i can't know what happened to them right. but I, I can tell you what happened at that split off point yeah, yeah. absolutely because there's there's longer lines than usual because they also encourage having you know um six feet in between people so you can imagine and that's <laughs> Okay, uh, actually, I sent you guys a picture on WhatsApp. Yeah, I remember we that. Got, yeah. when we, and that's exactly the line looking the other way um, for people um, being tested. So um, it, it just, and you can see how many people actually didn't stay close together. Yeah. Um, and then that's just the nature of humanity. You know, um, we all hope that everybody will do the right thing. And we all know that there is a whole spectrum of, consciousness out there and some people choose to just do whatever they think um is best for them and that may not be best for everybody else and so that's why governments are forced to put these measures in place and so so what happened if you were green you just walked through if you were orange you went over to a station like cubicles yeah and there were obviously people that had different equipment i'm not a doctor i couldn't tell you exactly but i did see swab swabbing uh -huh. so, so they, they did a more uh, uh, more in-depth test oh absolutely um yeah. japan thailand singapore south korea they're all way ahead in terms of uh proactively testing people yeah. um even with all the efforts in north america that's not even close to the volume of people that are being tested in southeast yeah. asia so yeah. um yeah it, it was just you know really an, um i'm gonna say it was an experience that was unprecedented because one on the one hand airports were eerily quiet you know like it was like ghost town and and then on the other hand there you know you'd look at the board and like 90 percent of the flights say canceled yeah <laughs> and then there's the, every once in a while you see one where you can actually see a gate assigned to a flight and um uh and then you walk through and then you walk through security and then you Again, you, you, your temperature is being taken at the gate area before you actually get on the flight. So, wow. Wow. Um, and when you actually got to the gate, when you looked at the ramp, were there like not many airplanes? 
Um, well, if it was a hub, they probably have a lot of grounded airplanes. But yeah, they have a. I mean, airplanes were what was most noticeably to me as a somewhat frequent traveler is all the airplanes parked at the airport. You know, yeah. like just parked where you usually don't see them, and it, it was just um, yeah that that kind of gave you an idea of the scale of how you know airlines are are pulling back flight, flights. And uh, we were just lucky that um, by virtue of the day we picked that our flight um, wasn't canceled um, because um, the Japanese flag carrier, all Nippon Airlines um, that we flew on also um, uh, had seven flights. So, so seven flights in a week from Tokyo to Vancouver and they canceled four of them and then just consolidated, you know, and tried to fill up the airplanes as much as possible. So, wow, wow. Well, we're glad you got back selfishly and in in the in the spirit hey, of community. I got to tell you two things. First of all, um, I am in a fourteen day um, uh, self isolation together with Rebecca. So for for that time, we are um, not getting into any contact with anyone. And, and the, so the second thing, the really cool thing is that our kids get to buy groceries for us. So that's, you know, bonus. Cool. So, <laughs> so do they, do they monitor you then or do you report to them or anything? Or you um, just, just kind of on your, on your own? Only, yeah, no, 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 no. The, they were very, I mean, when we came into Vancouver, there were 10 border officers and, and health officials from uh, Health Canada, you know, um, yeah. asking us questions you know, alongside from all the measures that were taken, but, but really like you, you really felt, I felt anyways, that they were really um, helpful kind of realizing that people are in an angst, you know, and kind of, yeah. like, oh my God, you see it at the airport, like people. And then obviously when we're anxious, we start arguments, you know, with our loved ones, yeah. so we start, yeah. you know, like, uh, and, God, you, you definitely see that unrest in the airports, um, you know, and we were, we were in a bunch of them. We were in Bangkok, we were in Haneda, we were Vancouver, Toronto. So, you know, we got a good slice of um, what happens kind of like over the world here um, in, in airports. So if you're thinking about managing your anxiety and stress management, come to the 201 online class because we're going to talk a lot about that. So, and that's really what it's all about, yeah, whether it's fear of flying yeah. or... Um, coronavirus you know and and i let you share that at some point that that difference but i shared it on facebook the difference between fear and anxiety right yeah and yep. um and I, I i can tell you that a ton of people really responded to that facebook post um you know and and kind of like we're grateful recognizing that there's a difference you know and yeah. uh, anxiety is is absolutely manageable yeah. Um, and, and fear is at times appropriate. So, yeah. you know, it's just fear is when you open your tent flap and the bear is staring you in the face. Anxiety is when you get a, you, you escape the bear attack and, and you get home and you, you have nightmares over it after that. So we're going to talk about the difference of that in module one. Too. Mm -hmm. so yeah okay we have in the class speaking of parked airplanes eric <laughs> what's your life look like <clears throat> see my visual aid i made a visual aid my big oh <laughs> as it does most of us yeah killing me that's so what's perfect. What, what what happened well um so the airplanes uh, are the airplanes. The airlines are uh, taking a little bit of water, as we like to say, and the company has incredibly, uh, most generously, uh, um, and amazingly offered us some l different leaves to bid on um, that we would be paid partial partial salary, and it's an advantage to them because if they just furlough, which is fire us, except for we're still attached to the company, they just furlough us. Then when things turn around, they need people to come back. You, ha you have to train people when you go downhill, when they're detached. And then when you come back, you go, oh, geez, I got to reel all these guys in. It's an immense cost and time to, to turn the ship around. So, so let me let me just interject here. So so uh, what you're saying is, is it's not just a matter of like, if, if we were all factory workers, they just take they just whack off a, 
the, so far back in the line, we go home and then when they need to amp up again, they come bring us back. When you're in an airline, that, that's a process that everybody gets to bid then for, for the new equipment that's gonna be available. So if I was flying on a 757 and I wanna keep my job, I have to check out on a 767 or a 777 or something like that. Now I've gotta go through all that training. So I'm immediately not a, re a resource anymore, right? And how long can that take while you're, so, you, so you're a productive resource today and tomorrow when you gotta go through this training, how long does it take for you to get I can take 10 weeks in school plus another three or four for training flights. So in 90 days. Yeah. If they can get to get through it fast. And then when they're trying to do everybody at once, it's not going to go fast. Yeah. And so they're, they're trying to make that turnaround and it's very, very difficult. So to, to mitigate that, they said, okay, we'll offer you guys a percent of your salary if you keep your medical current. And, and we'll pay you this partial salary, and then you can come in to the Sims and stay current for landings and approaches every 90 days so that when, when it's over, over, or they have to reverse course, they have a number of people, they have a number of people that can get in the airplane right away and fly. The turnaround would be much faster. What happened to uh, myself and some of my buddies specifically is, uh, while all this is changing and the sands are just shifting completely, the airline has said, we're going to park your whole fleet, the 757s, 767s. We, we don't like them anymore. They're done. And so now, instead of me, I thought I would take a six-month leave and do stuff with my wife and, and do some virus dodging and have a, have a good time and take a pay cut. It would be swell. It was a no-brainer. Uh, no but now that they said they're parking the fleet, I go, uh, uh oh. And the fleet, the fleet you're talking about is your particular type of airplane. All right? of them. So when they call people back, I would still have rights to pick an airplane and a, and a base, but not, not the airplane I was on. So no matter what happened, I would incur that 10 week long course training plus a month plus everything else and probably turn myself into a. So now the, now the, effort on my part is tremendous and I'm a community spend more time with wife we're losing we're losing you just a little bit you're where you're frozen here and uh I think we, we just exceeded the bandwidth just a little bit there okay now, now you may you may be I saw a little bit of movement you might be coming back Okay. Okay. Now you're back. What did I last? What was my last statement? Yeah, we we could hear you. We just couldn't see see you. Oh, that doesn't matter if you can't see me. I'm not that pretty anyway. So yeah. So having no fleet to come back with and trying to spend as much time with Deb as possible, nearing retirement and, and doing stuff, is like, uh oh, I'm going to have um, a 90 day commitment minimum, and then be out of base, out of new airplane, and and the monetary difference was not going to be that huge. And I was going to have the stresses of checking out, training, qualifying, and being my normal unpleasant self during training for weeks, months on end. And, yeah. and there's a desire to, to keep going because you've, you've run yourself at maximum power your whole career and thinking I can, I can check out on one more airplane and wouldn't, would it be neat to do that? That's ego driven or amygdala driven. Yeah, there you go. And then the reasonable part of my brain goes, there's no good reason to do this if I can hold one of the leaves. Um, and the company will also offer us a reduced salary to take a leave until our retirement age, but, but still have medical benefits and all this other kind of stuff. But in my mind, I didn't think I would wake up, what is today, Tuesday? I didn't think I'd wake up last Thursday or Friday and say, oh, my last flight was ten days ago, and my yeah, which is kind of a big deal because when when you when you spend your time yeah. like this in a career, and, and it, it is kind of a big deal to celebrate your last flight. So my last flight was ten days ago, and my last medical went so well, and my last check ride was February, and I go, well, at least if I got a walk, those were really nice. But I just to shift gears so fast and say that life is in the mirror. But as you had pointed out yesterday, and I'm quite aware of how fabulously lucky we are to have that choice because my 
several of my favorite restaurants are closed and my poor little dry cleaner lady is is probably going to close up shop and leave and that story just gets repeated itself millions of times across america that somebody showed up to work and the door is locked and guess what they're not working anymore and that's their separation plan they can't get into they can't get into work yeah so it's, it's, this is this is a fabulous option to have even though it's mentally shocking to me yeah yeah well we're we're uh we're glad you're part of the team and we got a place for you here so uh no matter what happens with the airline uh My anybody may be wide open after friday there you go so, <laughs> so, so plan to see more of eric's face on, yeah. on on all of our stuff out there so anyway and uh we're gonna be cranking up a podcast we're gonna do more in the online area uh, a lot more and uh that's just around the corner so so stay tuned with us there any any final remarks from anybody you see there uh no, no, I just, um, I, um, halfway through, we realized that we're not actually live on Facebook. So, but I was able to share it immediately from YouTube because we're live on YouTube and people actually on YouTube, like Michelle and Elaine and David, um, just, yeah, people found us. Um, I hope you, you got some, something out of it tonight and, um, please stay connected because the truth is that when it's a virus on an airplane, anxiety is not necessary. So, the pain in your brain is not about the plane. Um, it's not about the <laughs> coronavirus. It's not about anything like that. It's it's yeah. the stories we tell ourselves. So, so uh, we, we want to thank you for for staying with us and checking in tonight. We'll be back next week again, and uh, look for for a lot of news coming up during the week. If you haven't taken our fear flying survey please do that this is we're going to have a great opportunity coming up to uh to do that webinar with that i've got a couple other ideas about webinars coming up even even in and around the uh, 201 class so thanks for watching thanks uh thanks Dieter. glad you're back thanks eric hope uh, your choice all goes well and thanks to you all out there we'll see you again next week for fearless fight live have a great week you guys good night everybody bye bye